One of Digi's recent videos is tips for right gooder. He goes over the process by which he had proved his writing and various mistakes he sees in beginner writing. Many of the YouTube commenters disagreed with his point that people should eliminate their introductions and their first impressions. I agree with Digi that amateur bloggers overuse introductions and first impressions. And one essay that many people write that is always annoying to me is they write about their first favorite anime. But instead of talking about that anime, the first 200 words about how and why they started watching that anime. I have seen this exact essay dozens upon dozens of times and it's always awful every single time. The story they're trying to tell I get. Anime is considered nerdy and weird, but by some miraculous event, you turned on your laptop to watch anime and liked it. The surprising conclusion being that anime is actually pretty cool. This story has nothing to do with why the anime is great. It has no place in an essay on why the anime is great. So I thought we could take a look at an amateur uh, essay. This essay is called A Sinful Structure, Kara no Kyoka in Unconventional Storytelling. Um, it's by Cloudfo, who posted it to our anime five months ago. It was decently popular for a long blog post finishing with 83 points. So we have to start off with a spoiler warning. The font contains minimal spoilers that are all tagged and clearly marked. If you haven't watched Kara no Kyoka, you could read and understand this essay just fine without knowing what's behind those tags, and then you should go watch Kira no Kyoka. All right, so I don't know if you can understand the essay without watching the show, but whatever. All right, but he does start off with an introduction, so I'm gonna read his own whole introduction. In late November, when I sat down to watch the first installment of Kanako Nasu's widely regarded Kira no Kyoka, I was completely un unprepared. All I knew is that I loved Nasu's Face Day Night visual novels, and that you photo those animation and production work would be stellar. I also knew that the first film was something about a series of suicides in urban Japan. I was completely unprepared with the gory, dark, no holds barred exploration of humanity's dark side that awaited me. My journey through Kara no Kyoka began with that uncomfortable, startled experience. I came to believe once I had adjusted that Kara no Kyoka is an overall excellent series of films with a lot of thematic me. And while that's the type of stuff I would want to write about, Kirino Kyokai's unconventional narrative structure is what captured my respect and admiration the most. So this is the introduction stuff that Jiji says to take out of your essays. The point that Cladfold tries to make here is that he was surprised by the level of violence in Kirino Kyokai. It's surprising uh, how far it goes with his violence in a lot of cases. It's written by the same guy who wrote Face Day Night. Is it really so unbelievable? Face Day Night is about a battle to the death between mages. So it's not that surprising that someone who wrote a Sabukai fiction would write something even more violent. And also, so the mistakes in the rest of his essay is it's not really about why unconventional narrative structure captures his respect and admiration the most. All right, so he says... Every film reveals a little more detail about every character and explains a little about the setting and circumstances of the cast. He should expand on this point. Like, how does this happen? How does this every movie reveal more detail about, you know, the plot and stuff? And, you know, the characters. This is the point he's making. <laughs> Like, for me, if I was ready to essay about this... Alright, first of all, I would go over what are the plots. What are the big plots of Kirito Kyokai? The Mikiya and Shiki love story. Tornma, Shiki, and Miki being the Ghostbusters and going around and banishing the spirits. The whole thing with Shiki might be addicted to killing people, but she might not. Who knows? So then I'll explain how the tension in the story culminates those separate stories in the most satisfactory conclusion by the order of the movies. All right, let's take a look at this last point he makes. The satisfaction with uncovering the killer comes not with knowing who did it and how, but knowing why they did it. It's seeing the darkness of their soul and determining if the sin was justified. While each individual film is fairly satisfied, reflection on right and wrong. All right, so you're going to have to explain that one to me. I remember most of the villains either being obviously evil or obviously doing something morally wrong. This kind of goes to Digi's point about how you need to explain your more unique ideas and more than your common ideas. If I was talking about Naruto and said Naruto is about the importance of a strong and wise leaders in society, well, I wouldn't be wrong, but that's not one of the main points people usually get from Naruto. And I would definitely have to explain why that's relevant to the experience of watching Naruto. 
what I got out of Kara no Kyokai was I liked the relationship between Shiki, Miki, uh, and I liked the Tonma, Ghostbusty, Detective Team stuff. The magic was cool. In your opinion, the moral questions that it raises are great. Explain that to me. So the biggest problems I had with his essay was he did go over the thesis of his essay that thoroughly, and then he made some points that really needed to be explained more, and he didn't explain them that much.